So major elements to maintaining the cleaning process. We need compliance with standard operating procedures. How many times have you heard someone on the floor say to you, basically, I didn't follow the procedure? Oh, I hear that all the time and you're like, I can't believe you're saying that. I just had a person execute a validation on the floor and write down all the information on scrap paper. Are you kidding me? Right, like I said to them, did I have to tell you that you can't use white out too? You know, like really, are we in the 70s here? Scrap paper? And they said, well, I wanted it to be pretty when I put it in the protocol, right? I wanted it to look neat. And, and the, the sad part is they wrote it in the protocol like three days later from the scrap paper. They didn't even know enough to like fudge the dates. You know what I mean? Like, not that I would want them to lie, but they put the actual dates that they were recording it three days later versus even writing a note saying this was recorded on scrap. And they threw the scrap paper away. Right? They didn't attach it as an original. Like, well, my God, this is just so bad. But anyway, oh, yeah. So compliance with standard operating procedures. If people aren't following the procedures, it's typically not because they don't want to. Right? It's typically because they either can't, right, the way the procedure is written, or they don't understand the importance of what's written, why it's important to follow it that way or they found a shortcut and why are they using shortcuts, right? To get things done quicker, to get things done better. Whatever the reason is, I'm a wholehearted believer that 95% of the people in our, our manufacturing floor want to do the right thing, right? It's just what is the right thing? Is getting the product faster the right thing? Or is following the SOP to do the four hour cycle the right thing? And we have to explain to them why that's the right thing, to follow the SOP. Uh, so, with respect to cleaning validation, this could be visual inspection of internal equipment surfaces prior to use. Very important that people do those visual inspections and document them, right, prior to use. And also any conductivity verifications they might be, it's not uncommon to have inline conductivity. There's also inline TOC in some instances, right, or inline PAH that you might want to verify. So, next slide, standard operating procedures. You have to do effective training of operators. I don't know how many of you just do the read and understands. Read and understands, let's see a show of hands, right? Right, does anybody really learn anything from that? When I started, I had 223 read and understands I had to do within the first six months. Really, like I don't remember much of what I read and understood during that first six months. I was having a hard enough time remembering how to get from point A to point B in people's faces, yep. So it's important that SOPs be robust and ensure that equipment is used in the manner it was validated. That has to be in the SOPs. It's important that operators are, re it's reinforced, not just for operators, but for validation personnel as well. It's on the floor, you shouldn't be trying to do it from memory, right? Trying to remember what the SOP says. And that, that then lies some of the problems with some of the SOPs we have. We have like 200 SOPs to tell you how to do a process step. Well, no one's gonna pull out 200 SOPs to do a process step. So think about this from the ground up versus, you know, building something big from the top down. Operators must comply and perform the same procedures as validated. So again, it's important that the validation program, the validation quality system, have a good way to transfer what was validated into the standard operating procedures and a loop back for any time the standard operating procedures are changed, right, which is another paper chase that some companies do, all their document change requests. What was the impact of that change? Am I still in the validated state? Eye exams, how many of you do eye exams for operators? Yeah, so it's something the auditors have been looking for lately, right? If you have somebody that's colorblind, if you have somebody that just can't see very well, the postman at our, at our town, our little town that I live in, uses a magnifying glass, one of those big, thick magnifying glasses. And he's like looking at the papers like this. Yes, yes, this mail is for you, Don. I'm like, oh, you're not gonna do any cleaning validation to my facility, right? But uh, so you do need the eye exams. Verification of training at a specified time increment. So especially for manual cleaning, people should be qualified on a regular time interval. There should be some kind of verification of training or some kind of training. Right? Maybe you have manual cleaning validation pressure training for the operators that are on the floor to perform the training. But again, translate this to the operators. Don't forget that the people on the front line are your most important people to get the information to, right? And, and they're the people who have the most information to give to you. So don't forget that. And competency training to ensure operators understand the importance of maintaining the validated state. 
Again, I am a true believer that people on the floor want to do the right thing. It's just helping them understand what the right thing is, right? Especially when they're feeling the pressure to go faster, get more batches done, right? So they feel that pressure and their supervisor's telling them, you gotta get this done, you gotta get this done. They need to understand that the right thing is to do it the right way. And why is that? Because we're protecting the patient, right? Always about protecting the patient. Visual inspection can allow detection of gross contamination concentrated in small areas that could otherwise go undetected by sampling and or analysis. We have our operators visually inspect every piece of equipment every time they clean it. Now what does that mean though? They don't do uh, destructive testing, right? they don't take things apart, they don't open the man head of the tank. So tanks are very difficult, they just look through the sight glass and see what they see. So it's not the same visual inspection that we would do for a validation, but at least it's a visual inspection. For small parts, they do do a thorough visual inspection. But it's important that you on uh, some frequency go out on the floor and look at what they're looking at, right? It's that low-hanging fruit thing, right? You know how when you started a new company, you see stuff they're doing, and you're like, oh my God, that's so stupid. Like, that would be so much easier to do a different way. But after you've been at the company for six months or a year, you're just kind of entrenched in the culture, right? That's what we do. That's how we do it here. And, and you don't see that there's an easier way to do it. The same thing happens to the operators. They see a stain on a piece of equipment, or they have a piece of equipment that always has crystals on it. That's just the way it always is, right? It's not different. That's the way it always is. But you as the person coming on the floor that's not typically there can say, wait a minute, that's not quite right, right? I had one operator at uh, Swiftwater who was actually putting Dawn dishwashing detergent in the sonicator. Like, what are you doing? He says, well, that helps, doesn't it? I'm like, no, no, that doesn't help. That's not part of the validated cleaning. You can't put Dawn dishwashing detergent in the sonic, and it would bubble like, you know how when you put uh, soap in a hot tub? And you get the bubbles on the top, so he's getting bubbles. He says, see, bubbles are good, bubbles are good. I'm like, bubbles are not good. No, not good. Oh, jeez. okay. So no residue to be visible on the equipment after cleaning procedures are performed. Spiking studies to just demonstrate the level of visibility. Auditors have been asking for that. How low can you see? Spike coupons for people to look at, like under the bright light in the biosafety hood, right? He spiked the tank, and you have to look at it from the sight glass, or look at it at different angles with different lights, at different distances. How far can people really see? Not everybody's doing it that way yet, but there's definitely a push in the industry to start doing it that way. In fact, I can't say, you know, there's that gold neg again. We absolutely have to start doing our spiking studies uh, that way. You want to have visual inspections conducted per some standard operating procedure, not just say, you know, visually inspect, but have some description. Specifically say, look behind the baffle, look at the gaskets, are there any inclusions, you know, is anything warped? Put, put details in there for them for the visual inspection. And basically, is it clean or not? All right, is it clean or not? So I told my son Tommy, why do I pick on Tommy? I don't know. But I told Tommy, clean your bedroom, right? That's one of your chores, clean your bedroom. You know what he did? He took two cans of Lysol and sprayed it all over his bedroom. So I went back later, and of course, there's fog in the room, right, from the Lysol. I'm like, Tommy, what did you do? He said, I cleaned my bedroom. I said, you didn't clean your bedroom? There's stuff all over the place. He said, I sprayed it with Lysol. I said, Tommy, that's not clean. He said, you did not properly define clean. Yes. I said, Thomas, red up your room. So I'm from Pennsylvania, right? And red up is a colloquialism that we use. He says, well, now, mother, if you're going to use colloquialisms, this is going to get difficult. Like, oh, Thomas, you're grounded, right? You're grounded for two weeks. <laughs> so basically, is it clean or not? Right? That's what you're asking the operator to tell you. Is it clean or not? And what do you do with stains? So we had one CIP tank that from the heating and cooling cycles over and over and over had turned into like a rainbow color tank, if you will. But, but it didn't come off, right? It, it was there, but it didn't come off. So we just had to document that in the tank log. You have a rainbow color tank, but now how do you visually inspect a rainbow color tank to be clean so you can't see through the rainbow colors? You can tell there's no white specks, but you really can't see if there's any black specks. The other thing is how many of you find graphite in your tank, right? Some of your mechanical seals and your mechanical equipment might be using graphite. And occasionally you're going to find graphite in the tank. Is that a visual failure for a cleaning validation? You have to decide that up front. It's rude. It's visual Validation. My cleaning is not validated to remove rouge. 
but operators should not be using equipment that's used. Right? So if they see rouge on the equipment, they should call maintenance or engineering. They shouldn't call validation and say your cleaning validation failed. Two different quality systems. But still, the operator should be visually inspecting for that.